time to start moving into the sanctuary to begin to prepare your heart for worship, prepare your heart to enter into the presence of Almighty God, the Holy One of Kona Faith Center. He called my name and I thought, oh no, I can never leave. <laughs> he knew my name. I couldn't believe it. This person who knew God knew my name. And from then, I started going through the classes, going through their champion programs. And um, as I got to know the Lord, and he delivered me more and more from the heartbreak and the anger and all of that, I began to get, began to get plugged into our youth program. And before I knew it, I was running Jewels. Testimony time. So my testimony is God has completely changed my life. A lot of you get to see my growth here in the church. Um, I'm very happy to be a part of this church and excited to see what God's going to do for me in the future. What did God do for me this week? Um, he aligned a new schedule in the new year that fits to the days I don't want in time. So now I don't have to be working all over the place. I'm going to have a set schedule. Amen. Evil. 
people of Kona Faith Center, time for the announcements. So this is for the week of January 22nd. So January 22nd, there's a family day and baptism down at Cuyahoga Bay. It's at 2.30 p.m. You do need to sign the two forms. I know you guys are getting tired of the two forms thing, but praise Jesus. There's one that's one form for the whole year, and the other one, you just got to scribble your name. So we do need those two forms, one for the Kamehameha Schools and the other one for the church. There is a church one online, so for all you techie people, you can just fill it out online, send it in, and we're all good. So be there. It's a pot blessing, so bring something to share. Friday, January 27th, is the Zakan, the Mature Adult Barbecue, ages 40 and up, so I'm not part of that cool kids club, but it's here. See Whitney for details. You guys are going to have a great time. There's a lot of people signed up so far, so you don't want to miss out for sure. Saturday, February 4th, is the women's meeting. It's here at 9 a.m. We do have a special guest speaker, so you don't want to miss that. There's a sign up on the back table just so we know how many people are coming, how many tables to set up. So make sure that you're there. Friday, February 10th, the youth are going to food trucks and to the beach. See Angel for details. Sounds like it's going to be a good time. And lastly, be sure to check out Pastor Jason's new podcast. It's the Word of the Day podcast. It's a few minutes long. Check it out. It's on the app. Go to media, and then it's right there under Word of the Day podcast. Those are the announcements. This is the time to begin moving your focus from the horizontal to the vertical, begin to prepare your heart to step into his presence, to begin to prepare your heart for creating that atmosphere of faith where God will come down and inhabit the praises of his people and do miracles and do signs and do wonders in our midst.
All of the glory is yours, Lord. We are here to worship you, to bring honor to your name, to forget our ideas of things, to forget our plans, and to focus on you. Here we go. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. There is. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. 
There's deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord.
no more, nothing but joy, you replace it all. come here today that absolutely needs God to do something in their lives, that they've kind of come to the end of their rope on some things. So I just want everybody to be seated in an atmosphere of worship. Now, I just want you to get your receivers open. God wants to touch some people today if he hasn't done so already. If you absolutely need a touch of God in your body, in your soul, or in your spirit, I just want you to stand to your feet right now. Okay. Now get your receiver open because... The miracle working, all powerful, all knowing God wants to touch you right now. There's healing flowing right there. There's freedom flowing right there. There's a renewing, a renewing of spirit flowing right there. Health and life and vigor and vitality right there. There's prosperity flowing over here someplace. There's a newness of life coming. There's forgiveness. Now there's healing. For anybody that needs healing in their body, God wants to heal you. So I want to do something different today. If you need healing, get ready. If you are experiencing God touching your body in a real way, I just want you to raise your hand up. There it is, right there. Now, don't be in a hurry, because he's got more to give to you. Don't be in a hurry. He's got more that he wants to do in you. Don't be in a hurry. Receive everything that he has for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are the healer. Thank you that you are the God that sees to it, whatever it is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So the proper response when we receive something is to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
Now, it doesn't sound like everybody got that, so I just want you to turn to somebody, get right up in their grill, and just tell them, receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning, Kona Faith Center. Glory to God. God is so good. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Who forgets nothing. And we are to forget nothing but to remember all of his benefits. You are so good, God. Thank you for loving each and every one of us. Thank you for your care. Thank you that you never leave or forsake us. Thank you you are mindful that we are but dust, and you love us so much. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have, I hope you're, reading daily with us. I'll tell you what, when I am reading the word, I am just like, I feel like I'm in a bubble and nothing can penetrate it except that I'm there with the Spirit of God. I'm there with the Lord. It's so awesome. A few days ago, and Genesis is one of my absolute favorite books, just the, the miracles, the promises, the covenants, are so incredible. And I was reading the other day and really thinking about this in Genesis 28 and in verse 20. And Jacob made a vow to the Lord. And it's an interesting vow. He said, if God will be with me and watch over me on this way that I am going and provide me food to eat and clothes to wear. You guys have food? You have clothes? And I return in shalom, peace, to my father's house, then Adonai will be my God. I don't know about you, but the peace of God surpasses all understanding. When I think about even just a few years ago when I would fret about something, how God took that away, replaced it, like we sang today, replaced it with his peace. And it, his shalom is so awesome. It is, to me, it's beyond words. Because how could you have a greater gift than the peace of God in your life walking through this earth? It, it changes your entire perspective. It changes everything and anything that you think could come against you, but it can't come against you. I'm not saying we don't go through tribulations. I'm not saying we don't go through difficult times. But if you don't, you're not breathing, then you're home. But while we're here, we need that peace. The last verse is 22. So this stone, which I set up as a memorial stone, will become God's house... You could get deeper into that by searching the scriptures. And of everything you provide me, everything you provide me, I will definitely give a tenth of it to you. Now, God didn't ask him for the tenth, but, you know, he came from Abraham, Isaac. But it may sound like he was doing something conditional, but what he was doing was calling on the covenant that God had already, already established, established in to the promises to Abraham, to the promises to Isaac, to the promises to Jacob, to the promises of every believer, because we walk in that same Abrahamic covenant. It tells us in the New Testament 
if we truly believe, if we truly have subjected and submitted ourselves to the Lord, we walk in covenant with God Almighty. And if we are walking in covenant with God Almighty, that evil cannot penetrate. And Jacob's response was the response that we should have when we really understand the covenant of God in our lives. What he has committed to in our lives, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing to give him a dime on a dollar. It almost seems ridiculous. It almost seems ridiculous to give 10 on 100. It almost seems ridiculous to give 100 on 1,000. It is ridiculous when you think about it, what little God requires. And he didn't even ask Jacob. Jacob was cut in covenant with God, saying, I know your covenant is good. I know your covenant is true. I know you will do these things for me. So this is my commitment to you on everything. Everything you give me. I don't see tithing and giving offering and giving alms like to missions and and those kinds of things as something I have to do. I've never really seen it like that. It is the my part of the covenant for every single promise of God. Every single one. Why would I want to withhold my part of the covenant when he so graciously gives to me all of his. So, Father, I thank you that we are, we're word people, we're faith people. And I pray that we all put our money where our mouth is, our money where we say our heart is, and not because you need it, but because we stand and and the songs that we We worshiped you with this morning. We are declaring that you are God. You are above all. There's nothing higher. There's nothing bigger. There's nothing stronger in our lives than you. Your power is indescribable. Your love, there isn't even a definition for it because it's so strong and so great and so mighty. Your peace, oh Lord in this crazy, messed up world. You gave us the greatest of gifts you could give, your peace, that we don't have to fret. We don't have to concern ourselves. We just can talk to you through prayer. We can say, Lord, I believe, I trust you. Doesn't matter what's rising up around me. Doesn't matter how close the fire is getting. It doesn't matter how close that tsunami is getting because I am in the secret place of the Most High with you and nothing can trouble me there. That's what I pray that is in the heart of each believer. Today, whether sitting here in the service, watching us on the various channels, This is my prayer, and it's my thank you to you because there isn't enough thank yous that we could give that you deserve. Bless my friends. I know they are. In Jesus' name. He restores my soul.
Hey, we're having our family day down at Keho Bay today. Come on out. Good time, yes. I'm going to dismiss the children at this time. Go and be blessed. <clears throat> Bless all those children. Bless all those chillins workers, yeah. Them youth workers. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, the, the word that the Lord gave Pastor Terry and me for the year is the just shall live by faith. Now that phrase is found four times, at least in the New King James Version. It's found in Habakkuk chapter 2. It's found in Romans chapter 1. It's found in Galatians chapter 3. It's found in Hebrews chapter 10. I want to look at Romans chapter 1 today. Romans 1 and 16. I primarily preach out of the New King James Version. I knew you were waiting for that. So Romans 1 and 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For the gospel of Christ is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek, for in the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, this is a very interesting passage of Scripture, so I'm going to kind of break it down and tell you what people say about it, and then I'm going to talk about what to do about it today. The gospel of Christ, people's theology impacts the definition of this term, the gospel of Christ, in direct ways. Clarence Bentz in the Bible commentary in the Wesleyan tradition, was that a mouthful or what, <clears throat> says that the gospel is the good news that a righteousness is available and can be revealed from God. Whoa. Now, most of my commentators focus on the gospel as the good news is salvation theme. Several of them follow the forgiveness gospel focus. The focus of the forgiveness gospel is God saying, you're forgiven. You get a ticket for heaven. All you got to do is say a prayer. Now, antinomianism is the term coined by Martin Luther to describe this position. Antinomian means anti-against. Uh, nomium is the Latin word for the law or good works. And what they mean by that is that man does not need to follow moral law or natural law, especially as expressed in the Ten Commandments, and has no responsibility to do good works. Now, this is often expressed in different ways. Saved by faith alone, Martin Luther, sole fide. Uh, we are not under the law. We are justified by grace alone. Now, none of my commentators would consider themselves antinomian, even though they actually hold this particular position. And their way around it is to say, and Luther said this as well, 
that anyone that is truly saved automatically follows the moral or natural law, the Ten Commandments, and automatically or naturally does good works. It's not an inter it's an internal expression, it's not an outward imposition. Now, I, I am not the smartest guy on the planet. I am definitely not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but all I have to do is look at my own life to know that I don't automatically do the right thing every time. I wish I could stand up here and say I did, but that would be a lie and you would know it. So unfortunately, this line of the theological reasoning leads to the conclusion that God decides before the foundation of the world who will be saved and who won't, predestination as opposed to foreknowledge. Predestination means God decides. Foreknowledge means God foreknew because he's all-knowing. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this position leads to the idea that whatever God decides, it doesn't matter if man cooperates or not. And since that God decides, and I'm going to step on some toes, so get them underneath the chairs right now. The way that's expressed is God is in control. Have you ever said that before? Well, I want to tell you God ain't in control because if God was in control, there wouldn't be wars, there wouldn't be famine, there wouldn't be pestilence, there wouldn't be murder, there wouldn't be theft. Everybody would be walking with Jesus. Everybody would be in love with God. Everybody would love each other. And you got to be, uh, well, let's just say that's obvious that not everybody loves God and not everybody loves each other. So if we take the position that the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is sometimes called the discipleship gospel, in the way the Bible would say it, the kingdom is at hand. Jesus is the king. Jesus died to restore right relationship with the Father for us. Jesus rose again to give us the power to live the abundant life that he came to give. Then we can properly see the God-man partnership as God intends it. Clarence Bentz says, ultimately, one's faith relationship with God defines the Christian life. In other words, what you believe, what you hold is true in your relationship with God is what defines what you think the Christian life is all about. And if you don't think that you have an obligation for moral living and doing good works, as part of your faith, then that's not part of what you think Christians are supposed to do. And everybody, including the devil himself, thinks that Christians are supposed to be living a moral life and doing good works, right? So Paul connects a right relationship with God to moral accountability in this verse, in this passage. It's the divine standard of what is right and wrong that defines the operation of God's work as salvation. Whoa. God, by his own character of justice and holiness, sets the standard by which all other moral agents relate to him. Oh, I know that flies in the face of what most of us think. Most of us think we set the standard. God sets the standard on how to relate to him. We don't get to tell God how we're going to relate to him. He gets to tell us how we're going to relate to him. Uh, Paul Actemeyer, in his interpretation commentary, states that salvation is determined by lordship, or as the gospel of Jesus Christ would say it, kingship. Lordship or kingship is the place where the Lord, the King, where Jesus rules and reigns. Paul states that it's not a question of whether or not we have a Lord over us. As creatures, we have no choice in the matter. 
The only question is, what sort of lordship will it be? If our goals are set with no final regard for the will of the true God as expressed in Jesus Christ, Paul wonders that we would become less than we as human beings made in God's image are supposed to be. Let me think about that with you just for a minute. If I don't turn to God and seek his will for my life, I end up being less than what he created me to be. Whoa. He says, do we not, in fact, if we take that position, do we not, in fact, come to resemble the idols to which we devote our lives? Sub, such substitution of created for creator. Ourselves as Lord in place of Jesus as Lord is nothing other than idolatry. Whoa! And he says this is precisely the point that Paul makes here. He says that the root of human sin, human sin is the substitution of something other than God the Creator as Lord. Now, I've really wondered about this this week. Is Jesus really ruling and reigning in my life? Are my decisions made after consulting the one who I say rules and reigns my life or before? Is my life really about his rule and reign or have I allowed other things to take up space in my life that rightfully belongs to him? Am I too busy with other things? Am I too busy to seek first the kingdom? Am I too busy to seek first his way of doing things? Now, if we expand the definition of gospel to the Word of God, to the Bible, then we can see that it is in the Word of God, by the power of God, that the righteousness of God, which is God's way of doing things, is revealed to us. And there's an implied command in that. If we believe that it's the Word of God, the power of God, the righteousness of God, then the implied command is that we must align ourselves with God's way of doing things, God's righteousness as revealed in His Word. Now, my commentators that hold to the forgiveness gospel as being central interpret the righteousness of God here as making God making salvation available to man. Now, I totally believe that. I believe that God makes salvation available to man. And I believe that if God didn't make it available to man, there would be no hope, right? But this is a one-sided proposition. If we expand the view of righteousness as to being more than the ticket to heaven, if we expand the view of righteousness to God's way of doing things, then we can see that living life, the abundant life, the Christian life, is a relationship with this almighty, all-knowing creator. And in this relationship, this almighty, all-knowing creator reveals by his spirit, through his word, his way of doing things. And we is our part in the deal, align ourselves, adopt as our own God's revealed way of doing things. Now, some guy named Godet says, this alignment restores the life of God in the soul of men. And this is a normal state of health. I, when I read that, I just thought, say what? Aligning myself with the Word, aligning myself with God's way of doing things restores the life of God in my 
soul, and it brings the normal state of health to my soul that God intended in the first place. Wow. Now, James says that faith without works produces nothing. Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So in context here, God making available to anybody, to everybody, by his spirit, through his word, how to live the abundant life that Jesus came to give us does not produce anything until we engage this life by the Spirit as revealed in His Word and start aligning ourselves with His way of doing things. Man. I don't know about you, but this is convicting stuff to me. You see, when I align myself with his word, it puts me on the path to the abundant life that Jesus came to give. The New American Commentary says that the gospel is power. And not simply a display of power, but the effective working of God's power in our lives. The gospel is of Jesus Christ is the power of God at work in us. But power needs to be engaged. You can turn a car on. You can rev the motor. I changed the oil on my wife's Jeep. Turned it on, rev the motor, and it went, Wah! and I thought, whoa. I hope that oil got in there before that thing went, Wah! But, you know, I didn't go anyplace. I was right there in the garage where the thing started when it was off. You see, you don't go anyplace until you engage. Until you engage the transmission, you don't move anyplace. So this guy Clarence Bent says, ultimately, one's faith relationship is what defines the Christian life. Jerry Seville says that the reason most Christians don't live the life God wants for them is a lack of consistency. Now, Jerry's main message is the biblical principle of sowing and reaping, and he rightly points out that one sowing and one reaping does not meet every need. He says that the way it works is we have to start small. And then God brings increase. And as we increase, God brings more increase. And then Jerry, he loves to flip out all the religious types because he says that no matter how much increase God has brought to him, it is God's will to increase more and more. God is the unlimited creator. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Now, there's all kinds of interpretations of this faith to faith thing. Some say it means shown to be by faith and not by works of the law. Hmm. Some say it means moving from one level of faith to another level of faith. Some say it means from God who is a faith God to anyone who will receive by faith. This guy, Wilbur Dayton, says faith is obedience. But in this case, it is enabled obedience. The scope is not from human works to human works. It is from faith to faith. It is div from divinely imparted faith, and it is divinely maintained faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Adam Clark says the just or the righteous man cannot live a holy and useful life without exercising continual faith 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I will never be put to shame. That's kind of King James. He doesn't really cover the action very well. I don't know what that means. Because shame means that I care what you think. How about I will never fail? I will never be unsuccessful because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, there's something I can relate to. The kingdom is at hand. Now is the time to expand his rule and reign, not just in my life, but in the lives of people around me. Jesus is the king. Today is the day to expand his rule and reign. Jesus died so that I could enter into the God-man partnership. If he hadn't died taking care of my sin problem, I would not be able to have partnership with God. Jesus rose again to empower me by his spirit to live the abundant life he came to give me. And I will never fail. I will never be unsuccessful if I live his way. His word, his way, releases his power into my life. And it's to the degree that I align my life with his word, with his way, it's to the degree that I seek first the kingdom of God in the word, by his spirit, that he reveals to me daily it is through that obedient life that faith is in ever-increasing ways that he empowers me to be fruitful, faithful, prosperous, successful, healthy, to live the abundant life that Jesus said he came to give us. See, my life is to be lived in partnership, in the God-man partnership, and this is the faith relationship where I acknowledge God as Lord, Jesus as Lord. I acknowledge his ways as just, even though I don't understand them. Anybody read anything recently? You just look at it and think, what the heck is that? This is the faith relationship where I align myself with his word and his way by his spirit. So have I been hyperbolically theological enough for one day? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man, that was a mouthful. So let's just get practical about it. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How's your word life? Standard answer. Good, fine, okay, needs improvement. I want to tell you the truth today. Last year's word life ain't enough for this year. There's stuff coming down the road at us this year that's going to require a much higher alignment with the Word of God than what we did last year. John 16 and 33, Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. What things? His word. His word, he speaks to us that we may have peace, that sense of well-being that no matter what goes on, no matter how crazy it gets, he's going to take care of us. In this world, you will have, not maybe, not hopefully not, you will have tribulation. My wife said it earlier. If you're not experiencing anything, you're probably dead because we all experience anybody experience anything this week that wasn't just all that much fun yeah that means you're alive alive in Christ yeah but you can have peace he says be of good cheer because I have overcome the world so whatever the world is handing out to you you don't have to put up with because he's overcome the world 
Now, I don't know about you, but it seems to me like on the, what's it today, the 22nd? It seems to me like in 22 days, there's already been more tribulation this year than there was last year. And I want to tell you that last year's faith ain't enough for this year's tribulation. It seems to me like the devil's been given a lot more latitude to operate. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But here's what I want you to focus in on. Ain't no big thing. It's not a big deal because Romans 5 and 20 tells us where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. We just got to grow our faith this year to the next level high above the devil. James 4 and 6 says he gives us more grace. We must tap into more of everything that God has for us this year by growing our faith relationship with God. There's more available. I happen to agree with Jerry. He's an unlimited creator. He gives more grace, and if we got more grace, then more becomes available. Didn't Jesus says to him who has, more will be given? Yes, he did. But we really got to tap into it. James goes on to say, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. This has got to be a year that we increase our properly placed confidence in God. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know what's coming down the road this year. All the guys that are writing stuff about what's coming down the road this year, if they're being honest, are just saying, this is what I think. Most of the press is negative, right? It's going to be a tough year, inflation, depression, recession, all the rest of that, supply chain this, supply chain that. Up, strike here, strike there. And you know what I say? Lord, I know that my level of faith needs to grow to where that stuff doesn't overwhelm me, where what you have provided for me is available to me. Verse 7, therefore submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. This has got to be a year that we grow in our submission to God. Oh, and everybody's going, yeah, me and BJ at least are going, that's right. Yeah, uh uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, examine yourself. And let's be honest. Did you do everything this week that God told you to do? Yeah, right. And let's not get into condemnation or guilt or shame. That That's not the, what we're talking about here. This is just to acknowledge that this is a year to grow. This is a year to grow to that next level and being submitted to God and his word. But this is also a year that we need to grow in resisting the devil and what he wants for us. What does the devil want? He wants to kill. He wants to steal. He wants to destroy What does Jesus want? He wants us to have the abundant life. You got to submit to God. You got to resist the devil. We need to grow in this area. Psalm 119 and 1. I love Psalm 119. It is a masterpiece of literature. I wish I really understood and could read and understand Hebrew, the original language it was written in, because it's an amazing document. He says in verse 1, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. This has got to be a year we increase our walk in the law of the Lord. And for all that we're not under the law, I think it is Romans chapter 8 that says, the law of life in Christ Jesus, the law of abundance. we got to increase. And if we will walk in the law of the Lord, we're blessed or we're empowered to prosper And it's the empowerment to be successful in a year when a lot of people are not going to be successful. Verse 2, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. You know, I believe that you guys are people that have sought the Lord, but this has got to be a year of increase in seeking the Lord with all of our being, with our whole heart. Because if we do, this scripture tells us, 
that it will increase the empowerment to prosper. It will increase the empowerment to be successful in our lives. And we need increase in these areas for this year. Verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. We must increase in diligently living his way. We must increase in operating our lives by biblical principles this year to a greater degree than last year if we want even just the same level of success that we had last year. Joshua 1 and 6. Joshua 1 and 6. Be strong and of good courage. Now, I am going to tell you the truth. It's going to take some strength this year. It's going to take some courage this year to live God's way because there's going to be all kinds of pressure on us not to live God's way. So we got to increase our strength and courage this year like never before. Verse 7, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which, my Moses, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the left or to the right. We must increase in obedience to the revealed word of God that we can prosper wherever we go this year. Verse 8, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Wish this wasn't in there. Because this means I got to do something that I'm just not that comfortable with. Now, I've only been walking seriously with the Lord for 40 years. Can you believe that? Man, how did that happen? Can I, can I tell you something about 40 years? It went just like that. Life is but a vapor. Here today, gone to Maui. We got to take advantage of every opportunity we can because they are so fleeting. They come so fast. They disappear so quickly. He says, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. We got to increase our faith confession. You know, when we say what God says, it releases power. It releases power. Have you got about a dozen faith confessions that you are faithfully confessing every day? Well, I want to encourage you to do it this year because it's going to take increased faith confessions to have the increased power to be successful, to be prosperous this year. Now, you can be like me for, you know, 35 of the 40 years that I walked with the Lord and go, That's, that doesn't seem right. I, that, that just seems silly, just mouthing the words over. Why do I have to memorize the word? I, I, you know, I don't know. I, that, that, that. Or you can align yourself with God's word that says confess the word and see the power of God released into your life. He says, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Oh, man. If I had problem with faith confession, I got problem with meditate because meditate means to mutter or to repeat over and over. Now, there's a guy in this church that meditated the word, and he just walks around at work with a little card, repeating the word over and over again, and he's only done it for, you know, 30, 40 years, and he can quote about half of the Bible. Can I tell you that when that guy gets up here and starts just quoting Scripture after Scripture after Scripture without even looking at a Bible or his little note card, I feel the power of God hitting me because power is released when we speak the word out over our lives. We must meditate. We must speak that word day and night. We've got to increase the meditation of the word this year. Why? He says that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Can I, can I just play Moses for a minute? I know I kind of look like him without the beard. I want to set before you today life and blessing, death and cursing. But I want to suggest 
to you as strongly as I possibly can that you choose life and blessing and that you reject death and cursing. That means you have to do some things that don't make sense to you, that you don't like, that make you uncomfortable, like confessing the word, like meditating the word. Now, if we will do this, we will confess the word, if we will meditate the word, if we will align ourselves with God's way of doing things, it don't matter what the devil does. If we will align ourselves with God's words, if we will start living his way, it don't matter what the economy does. It don't matter what the government does. It doesn't matter what your employer does. It doesn't matter what your neighbor does. Because God has said, increase and be prosperous this year. God has said, increase and be successful this year. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Now, now I want you to get this. Come on. God is commanding you to be prosperous. God is commanding you to be successful. God is commanding you to walk in health, and the ways of the world will not produce what he has commanded. Only his ways produce what he commands. See, that's him calling me right now and saying, preach it, brother. You got it. God is commanding us to increase this year. Be strong and have a good courage. Don't be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Psalm 1 and 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. This needs to be a year that we increase the amount of counsel we get from godly people. Oh, I got one person that agrees with me. Well, Lord Jesus, then this is an area we need to increase in for sure. We need to make sure that our counsel is coming from the people that God put in our life this year. Whoo, you better move on, Pastor. Okay. He says, nor stands in the path of sinners. We need to make sure that our stand is in the path of God, not in the path of sinners this year. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. We need to make sure that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and not in the seat of the scornful this year. Verse 2, but his delight, oh my goodness. But his delight is the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Terry got up here and started talking about being in a bubble or something. I, we have been walking with the Lord seriously for 40 years or more. And we have read the word daily most of that 40 years. And I want to tell you something. Every day I see something that I've never seen before. Every day... I look forward to getting in the Word just to see what he'll have to say to me. Every day, it is a delight. It's enjoyable. It's something that we enjoy. And on the times that we get to share what God spoke to us, do you know that whatever he's saying to her, he don't say to me? Do you know what he's saying to me? He doesn't say to her. Do you know that by just listening or reading whatever he's saying to her, that God can speak to me? What a concept. What a novel idea. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. We need to increase our delight in the word this year like never before. And if we do, verse 3 applies to us, we shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Now, I don't know about you, but my Bible commands me to be fruitful and multiply beginning to end. Here, he's telling me how to do it. Align myself with the Word. Increase my delight in the Word this year, and I will bring forth fruit 
And then he had to add those last three words, in its season. It's not instant. And I don't know about you, but I would love, you know, McDonald's Christianity. <laughs> Drive up the window. Yeah, I need a basket of fruit. Thank you, Lord. See you later. How many know it's not how it works? He also says if we will increase our delight in the Lord, our leaf will not wither this year. And whatever we do, oh man, whatever we do, will prosper. John 8 and 31. Then Jesus said to those people of Kona Faith Center who believed him, Got anybody who believes him in here? He says, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And if you continue in my word, if you allow me to disciple you, if you allow me to make changes, if you allow me to change you into my original plan for your life, to be made in the image and likeness of myself, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. See, the Word is the power of God. And like any device that uses power, we got to recharge, we got to refill, we got to continuously get filled up so that we're always in a position of having more than enough power for whatever's coming our way. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, oh, Lord Jesus, make that truth. Let us together have the same spirit of faith. According to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. I, I really got hammered by this. I, towards the end of last year, I wasn't speaking life as much as I should have been. I was speaking the circumstances instead of the solutions. I was speaking about the problems instead of the answers. Now, I know that none of you would ever do that, but it was happening to me. And I know that I must increase my faith by speaking faith. This year, no matter what it looks like. He says in verse 16, therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing. You know, I, I kill that old man. Just crucify him. Get, take care of it and put on the new man. Yeah. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Hey, it's not enough to come to church on Sunday. It's not enough to come Sunday and Wednesday. It's not enough to go to your crew meeting or have your OHA once in a while. This has got to be a day by day, every day, morning and night kind of thing, because that's the kind of year we are going to be facing this year. Verse 17, for our light affliction. Oh, Paul wrote this while he was in prison, between chained to two guards, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You know, when I was 18, 19, 20, 30, 40, I thought, what is this guy talking about? Now that I went to men's breakfast the other day, we had a visitor come in, he looked at me, and he says, how old are you, 70? And I just thought, oh. How did this happen to me? I, I want to tell you, I don't know how it happened, but it happened about that fast. I mean, just yesterday I was 30, right? Our light affliction is but for a moment. And it is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hey, I want to tell you that your increase 
in aligning yourself with the word this year will not just impact this year, it will impact your eternity forever and ever and ever and ever. Verse 18, while we do not look at the things that are seen. Tell them, Thad, preach it, brother, get them. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. And we've we got to get a hold of this, gang, in, in a real way. We've got to speak what we want, not what we see. We've got to speak what God says, not what the world says. We've got to align ourselves with the truth and quit buying into the lie of the devil. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Whatever you're facing right now, whatever you're going to face this year, temporary, subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal. We must increase looking at the things that are eternal. How the heck do you do that, pastor? Get in the Word, spend time in prayer. Oh, come to church? How about this one? How about worship? Now, I asked the Lord this morning in my prayer time, I said, Lord, will you help me to engage in worship this morning? Because I've got to be in line with you for the word that you've given me for today. And I had to fight like cats and dogs, man to stay focused on the Word. Now, I thought the girls did an outstanding job this morning. There were some moments there where I felt like they were touching not just heaven, not just the throne room, not just the throne, but the king himself. But I still had to fight to stay there. We have to increase fighting the good fight of faith this year. We have to increase and calling those things that are not as though they were. We got to become like the God who made us, the God who made us in his image and likeness. We have to become more like him this year. And what does he do? He calls those things that are not as though they were. Proverbs 18 and 20. Proverbs 18 and 20. A man's stomach will be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. Say, what? Where's the scientific proof for that? Where's the philosophy that teaches that? It doesn't. Only God teaches that because only God can do that. We got to speak what we want. We got to speak what we see in the spirit realm. We got to speak the answer, the solution to the problems. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Now look it. Our God is the God of more than enough, and he don't want you to have just enough for yourself. And that's just not who he is in any way, shape, or form. Now he does want you to have what you need. But he wants you to have more than enough so that you can bless somebody else. How do we do it? We speak it. We speak it. We speak it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. we got to start speaking life like never before, and we have to quit speaking death like never before. Now, if this was easy, everybody would be doing it. So I just want to be clear about what I'm saying. How many of you made a negative confession, grumbled, complained about something this week? Every hand should be up or you're all liars, right? Because we all do it all the time. We got to stop doing that as much as we're doing it. We got to start speaking life, power, authority in the name of Jesus. Now, I could just go on and on and on and on. I got several more pages of scripture, but I think you made I think I made the point this morning. 
So I just want to finish with Hebrews chapter 10, and we start with verse 23. Hebrews 10 and 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. That word hope means confident expectation. We must increase in holding fast our confident expectation without wavering this year. And pay attention because these are five powerful words. For he who promised is faithful. I think that's six, Pastor. Can't count. Where's six? I'm afraid so. I, you know, I'm always so glad there's a teacher or a mathematician in here to bring correction to me. You know, it just makes life so much easier. I don't have to worry about the details. I got my detail, people. Hey, if you need to know what's going on around here, don't ask me. Ask one of the detail people. But listen, if we will confess what God gives us to confess in confident expectation, God who promised, God who promised, God who promised, God who promised is faithful to do it. And that is the best news in the Bible to me. I, it's not up to me to make something happen. It's just up to me to be obedient, to do what he says. Man, even I can do that uh, some of the time. I'm going to do it more this year than I did last year. I, I want you to notice something in this promise, though. God does not need to increase his faithfulness. Verse 24, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Hey, look it. Let, let's just cut through all the garbage. Nobody makes it by themselves. We absolutely need people in our lives. I'm doing things today because there's people in my life that I know if I'm not doing it, they're going to ask me about it. And, and man, sometimes that's just all I need. We need people, and we need people that aren't playing, you know, patty cake with us, but people that are being real, people that are helping us grow, increase in the things that God's asking us to do so that we can be successful and prosperous this year. Successful, yeah. He says, let us consider one another, one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as, the manner, as is the manner of some. Boys, get your feet underneath the table right now. Mario shared his testimony at the men's breakfast yesterday. And you know what he started out with? There are 40 men in our church. Where are they? Ooh, move along. I didn't say that. Mario said it. <laughs> hey, we need each other. We got to be with each other. We need to really work together, right? And we need to exhort one another. We must increase our strong encouragement with a practical application component to it, right? Because sometimes I know what to do. I just don't know how to do it. And he says, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hey, I, I want to say I think it's going to be a tough year for most of the world, but it's not going to be for us. And I want to get up in your face and help you have a better year this year than you did last year. That's what I want to do. Because last year's level of faith, last year's level of word, Last year's level of prayer, last year's level of worship, last year's level of revelation, last year's meditation, last year's confession, last year's obedience, last year's relationship with God is not enough for this year. However, God has made more available to us. And he's made so much more available to us that 2023 can be our best year ever. And I really expect it will be. So I want to challenge you today to have an increase mindset. Father, I just want to thank you for our time together. And Lord, my expectation, my confident expectation 
is blessing. Blessing on your people, blessing on this church, a blessing that overflows our lives and begins to impact this community around us. Help us to make the adjustments we need to make this year so it's not just something we're hoping for, but it's something that we confidently expect. And Father, I right now, I just release the empowerment of God in a fresh way, in a real way, in Jesus' name. Agnes, I want you to stand up. I was praying and I looked up at you, and God says that he wants to bless you more than you're willing to receive. So I, I want you to do what the Bible says. I want you to look up. Because God wants to bless you in ways that has not entered into your mind, that has not entered into your heart. He has things for you that will cause you to do the 20-year-old Holy Ghost two-step. So, Father, I just thank you for blessing and being poured out. Top of her head, the soles of her feet. Enough to overflow her life and impact the lives of those people around here. Clifford, I want you to stand up. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired about being sick and tired. I command, in the name of Jesus, every bit of sickness, every bit of fatigue to go. I forbid it to come back, and I permit the health, the life, the strength, the vigor, the vitality that God intended for Clifford in the first place to rule and reign his life this year like never before in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have a great week. aligning our choices and our thoughts and what we are speaking with what he says because that's when his power is released. Have a blessed week and we'll see you on Wednesday. Let all the people of Kona Place Center shout, shout your name with joy. Let all the people of Kona Place Center shout, shout your name with joy. For great